Introduction to stoichiometry. Note the relationship within the following chemical equation. N2 plus 3H2 produces 2NH3. Okay. So originally, we know we have one molecule of nitrogen combined with three molecules of hydrogen to form two molecules of ammonia. Okay. So one molecule to three molecules to two molecules. So here is the ratio. Okay. So we originally looked at it as that. Right? So we're going to look at it now as moles, ultimately. Okay? So it's really important to understand that this is the ratio that is always going to occur. Okay? So mole relationships in chemical equations. Multiply the previous ratio with the Avogadro constant, and you now get what is called a mole ratio. So we have N2. Same, same formulas that we just looked at, okay? Same ratio, one molecule to three molecules to two molecules. But if we use that, okay, we now also, we can also illustrate this as a mole ratio. One mole of, uh, of nitrogen gas to three moles of hydrogen gas to two moles of ammonia. Okay, so notice how we, we use the ratio without using the 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Right? So if we have three moles of it, three times 6.02, then we would have that many you know, molecules. But we're looking at it in terms of moles. So this is what we call a mole ratio. So the mole ratio is where we, can, where we use these coefficients and treat it as if what is the mole ratio between this okay, molecule with that and our final? Okay. So the relation between the moles in a balanced chemical equation are called the mole ratio. So we looked at it originally as one molecule to three molecules to two molecules, but treat it as one mole to three moles to two moles. Let's look at, uh, let's look at this question here. How many moles of ammonia are produced by 2.8 moles of hydrogen? So the two that we're looking at, okay, we've got 2.8 moles of hydrogen, and it's asking us how many moles of ammonia. So we're looking for X moles of ammonia. Which means, who cares about this part right now? We don't care. Okay, we don't care for it right now. Okay, we're not going to actually for the rest of this question. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to start off with a chart of moles, okay, two molecules, And the first one that I'm going to use, okay, I'm going to list what part of the ratio I need. But I'm always going to put my unknown one here up at the top. So ammonia. Okay. And then the next one I'm going to put hydrogen. So how many moles of ammonia do I have? I have of ammonia? No. That's what we're trying to find, oh. right? That's what we're trying to find. That's our X. So we have how many moles of hydrogen? 2.8. But now for the molecules part, okay, for the molecules part, what we're going to do is we're going to take this ratio here. It's a 3 to 2 ratio. So we have how many molecules of hydrogen? Three. How many of ammonia? Two. Okay. So what I have here with this chart, okay, is this mole ratio that I can now use this chart as my equation. So here's what we do. We treat this separation between the two as our equal sign. And remember in ratios, other ways to write a ratio is to write it in what form? 
as a fraction. So the ratio of x here, x to 2.8, can be written as x over 2.8. And this ratio of 2 to 3 can be written as 2 over 3. Okay? So pretty simple, right? Pretty simple. So we have two molecules here of what? What are we referring to? Two molecules of ammonia. Over three molecules of hydrogen. Right? So, to isolate for x, I'm just going to bring this 2.8 over. And I'm going to be left with x mole, okay, x mole of ammonia is equal to 2.8, okay, mole of um, hydrogen times two molecules of NH3 over three molecules of H2. Look what cancels out. Molecules, molecules, okay, H2, H2, and I'm left with ammonia. So when I multiply 2.8 times 2, then I divide it by 3, and what do I get? Okay, so 1.86 mole of ammonia, but least number of significant digits on my question? Two. So I only want the 1.8, which now becomes 1.9 mole of ammonia. Okay. So what we had was we had a ratio of 3 to 2 of hydrogen to ammonia. But if we're given 2.8 moles of hydrogen, we have to figure out in terms of moles how many moles do we have, and we use this ratio. Okay. The mass relationships in chemical equations. The coefficients in a chemical equation can represent any of the following. Number of particles, as we did at the beginning. That's what we already up until now know. The number of moles, which you just kind of discovered, and the mass of each reactant and product. Because we can do that, we can find that out. Right? So if we have the following, so we have, uh, just like the equation we just looked at, N2 plus 3H2 produces 2NH3. So in turn, we have one molecule to three molecules to two molecules. We have one mole to three mole to two mole. Okay? But now, mass of each one of the reactants, well, 2.80 grams okay, of uh, nitrogen to 6.1 grams of hydrogen to 34.1 gram of ammonia. How do you think I found that? The mass. Right? So, I ha so how did I find the mass? So we remember the, what I told you guys, so make sure you remember the relationship of molar mass is equal to mass divided by number of moles. If I know the number of moles, right, right here, and I know the molar mass because I can find that out on the periodic table. I can use all that, multiply those two together to give me the mass ratio now of each one of these molecules, okay, that are put together. And if you add these up, 28.0 plus 6.1, what do you get? According to the law of definite proportion, okay, according to the law of definite proportion, we know that whatever mass we start with, we must finish it. Remember, there's no such thing as magic. Okay? Even though in chemistry, sometimes when you mix two chemicals together, we did the magnesium, we burned magnesium, and wow, it looks so cool with the white light. Right? But whatever we started with, we end with that same amount. So nothing ever just disappears. 
Stoichiometric mass calculations. Reactants and products are related by a fixed ratio. If you know the number of moles of one substance, the balanced equation tells us the number of moles of all the other substances. That's why it's important to be able to balance your equation. Because if you do not know how to balance the equation, then your number of moles of this to that to the other is going to be wrong. Right? So stoichiometry is the study of the relative quantities of reactants and products in chemical reactions. So steps to solving stoichiometry problems as follows. Start with your balanced chemical equation. Okay. Next. Convert given the mass, okay, so you convert your given, so your mass or the number of particles of a substance to the number of moles, okay? Remember what we said, that relationship of molar mass, mass, and number of moles, very important in stoichiometry. Next, calculate the number of moles of the required substance based on the number of moles of the given substance using the mole ratio. So what we did with the first sample problem. Okay. And lastly, convert the number of moles of the required substance to mass or to the number of particles, whatever the question asks you. Okay, again, using that or using the Avogadro constant. Okay, if it asks you for the number of particles. Let's look at uh, this sample problem here. We have vanadium can form several different compounds uh, with oxygen, including, it's supposed to, this, the smart board software here is, it's supposed to be V2O5 or VO2 and V2O3. Determine the number of moles of oxygen needed to react with 0 0.56 moles of vanadium to form vanadium 5 oxide. So, we always want to start off with the equation. So we are combining vanadium with oxygen. Vanadium is not one of the diatomics, so it's just V. Plus oxygen, which is diatomic, so it's O2. To produce vanadium 5 oxide, which the formula comes out to V2. Now, questions given. Determine the number of moles of oxygen needed. Okay. So, number of moles of oxygen needed. So that is the X moles, right? And we are mixing it with 0 0.56 moles of vanadium. Okay. So, remember what we said, we always want to start off with our table, right? So we're going to, what are we listing? Okay. So we've got moles and we've got molecules. So which one are we going to list first? We're going to do that in a sec. We're going to do that in a second. So which one are we putting first? Oxygen, right? Because it's the one that we're trying to find. And then we put vanadium. So we don't know the number of moles of oxygen. So that's our X. What are the moles of vanadium? 0 0.56. How many molecules? This is where we balance. Okay, so now we're gonna balance the following equation. So take a second, balance this equation. When we're balancing it, what do we get? How many vanadium? Four. Four. How many oxygen? Five. And how many vanadium five oxide? Two. But now we don't really need this. This is not being asked in our question. So the ratio is based on this to that. Right? Based on that to that. So we have how many molecules of oxygen? Five. How many molecules of vanadium? Four. So remember what we said? When we're writing out our equation, we treat this as if this is the equal sign, right? So we're separating x over 0 0.56 over 5 over 4. So we isolate for x. Okay, we 
just isolate for x. And we're given 0 0.56 mole of what? Vanadium, right? Vanadium. And we're going to multiply it by 5 molecules of 5 molecules okay, of oxygen over 4 molecules molecules of vanadium. Okay, so molecules cancel out. Vanadium cancels out. All I'm left with is moles of oxygen. So when I multiply 0 0.56 times 5 and divide it by 4, what do I get? 0 0.7 moles of, uh, of oxygen. Now, least number of significant digits in my question? Two, right? So this answer is 0 0.70 moles of O2. So let's look at the following sample problem. Okay, so here is where we're putting stuff to real life situations. Carbon dioxide that is produced by astronauts can be removed with lithium hydroxide. The reaction produces lithium carbonate and water. An astronaut produces an average of 1.00 times 10 to the power of three grams of carbon dioxide each day. What mass of lithium hydroxide should engineers put on board a spacecraft per astronaut for each day? So that's what we're trying to find. And it seems like this really big thing. But what, what, according to the steps, what is the first thing you're always supposed to do? The equation. The, uh, you know, so you need to know all the formulas. So the reaction is as follows. Carbon dioxide produced by the astronauts. Okay? We need to put in lithium hydroxide. What's it going to produce? Lithium carbonate and water. But of this information, what's given? So we know we have 1.00 times 10 to the power of 3 grams of carbon dioxide. Right? We're being asked for what mass, so we want to find x grams of lithium hydroxide, which means, do I need these? No, I don't need these in my... But I need them there because I need to balance my equation, yes. Right? So to balance it, it's already, well, it's not already balanced. You put a two in front of the lithium hydroxide. Okay, so what are the two things that we need in our list? So we start off with our list. So what am I gonna list first? Lithium hydroxide, because it's the one of my unknown. Okay, now, what we're gonna do is we're going to still use moles and we're still gonna use molecules. Okay, and I'll show you guys where the catch kind of lies. Uh, you probably already figured it out. Carbon dioxide, how many moles? Can we get that, are we given that? No, it's something we're gonna to need to calculate. But let's go, let's fill in the rest of the chart. How many molecules of lithium hydroxide? Two, how many molecules of carbon dioxide? One, so the ratio is two to one. Okay, but now, how can I find the number of moles? Right. Exactly, I gotta find the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So, using the pyramid, molar mass, mass, number of moles. I wanna find the number of moles. So I'm gonna take my mass, okay, I'm gonna take my mass, which is one point uh, zero, zero times 10 to the power of three grams, and I'm gonna divide it by the molar mass of carbon dioxide. What is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? 44.0 okay, grams per mole. So grams cancel out, and I'm left with how many moles? Twenty-two point seven moles. So 
Now, just like we've done before, we treat this as our equal sign. Okay? And we have x over the number of moles of carbon dioxide, which is 22.7, equals a ratio of 2 to 1. And all we do is bring this 2.27. We isolate for x, and we're left with x is equal to 22.7 times 2 over 1. So when we multiply those two and divide it by 1, which is going to be redundant to do, what do we get? How, what is it? 45.4, 45.4, and what does that represent? See, by not putting the units, now we got to figure out moles of, moles of lithium hydroxide. Now, is that what the question is asking? No. No, exactly. It's asking for hot what? No. The grams, the mass. So, we're trying to find this. We are given that. So what do we need to find? The molar mass. So find the molar mass, and what are we going to do with that? Multiply it. We're going to multiply it, okay? So we're going to multiply 45.4 moles times the molar mass of lithium hydroxide. What was the molar mass of uh, lithium hydroxide? 23.9 grams per mole. So, moles cancel out. Okay, when I multiply those two together, what is the mass? And it's in scientific notation, 1.09 times 10 to the power of 3 grams of lithium hydroxide. That's the answer. Sample problem. A fuel mixture consisting of hydrazine, which is N2, H4 and dinitrogen tetroxide N2O4 was used to launch a lunar module. These two compounds react to form nitrogen gas and water vapor. If 150.0 grams of hydrazine reacts with sufficient dinitrogen tetroxide, what mass of nitrogen gas is formed? So, first things first, start off with our equation. So here is our formula. Okay, and the formulas and the actual equation and balanced. So, what do we have? Well, we look at the information. We've got 150 grams of hydrazine. Okay, so 150.0 grams. We want to find what mass of nitrogen gas. Okay, so that's our x. So x grams that are actually formed when these are combined. So what we're looking at is, now when we're listing, we're not listing within, we're, we're listing now between the reactants and our products. So let's start off with our, uh, with our list. So we have moles, we have molecules, okay. and we always list the unknown. So the unknown is nitrogen gas, and hydrazine, and two each four. So we know we've got X number of moles, but we all, we're trying to find X number of grams, but we're gonna treat it as moles because we can ultimately find that down the road once we've calculated our moles. So now, we cannot put this in here because we are looking for the number of moles. And in order to do that, okay, we need to convert to a molar mass, mass, number of moles. So we need to find the number of moles by taking the mass and dividing it by the molar mass. So let's do that for, for last. Let's do that after. So how many molecules of um, nitrogen do we have? Well, we have three molecules of nitrogen to a ratio of two molecules of hydrazine. So now let's go back. Let's try to find the actual, um, the, the number of moles. So we've got 150.0 grams, and we're going to divide it by the molar mass 
of hydrazine, which equals to 32.06 grams per mole. So grams cancel out, and it leaves us with 4.6 moles. Okay, so that's what we get. 4.6 moles of hydrazine into H4. So, same thing as we said. We treat, we separate these two okay, with our equal sign. And we have X over 4.6 equals 3 over 2. We want to isolate for x, so we're just going to bring the 4.6 over. So we get the following. x, and this is going to be x moles okay, of nitrogen, is equal to 4.6 moles okay, of hydrogen. Uh, times three molecules okay, of nitrogen divided by two molecules of hydrazine. So, hydrazine cancels out, molecules cancels out, and the unit that I'm left with is moles of nitrogen. So when I multiply 4.6 by 3 and divide it by 2, I get 7.019 moles of nitrogen. Okay, but I'm asked for the mass of the nitrogen gas. So again, we use this relationship, but we're given the moles. We have to find the molar mass. So we are going to multiply. We're going to multiply what we just found, okay, moles of N2 times the molar mass of nitrogen gas, which is 28.01 grams per mole. So now notice here, moles, moles cancel out. My answer is in grams, and I'm left with 196.6 grams of nitrogen. And remember, four significant digits are the least number of di significant digits in my question, so I have four significant digits in my answer. Sample problem. Passing chlorine gas through molten sulfur produces liquid disulfur dichloride. How many molecules of chlorine react to produce 50.0 grams of disulfur dichloride? So, step one, always start off with your balanced equation. Okay, so what are, is the information that we're given? So we're given uh, 50.0 grams of disulfur dichloride. 50.0 grams. We are being asked to find how many molecules of chlorine. Okay, that's what we're trying to find, which means the molten sulfur is not needed. So we're going to list okay, what we're given. Okay, so we have moles, molecules, and we always list what's the uh, the unknown that we're we're trying to find first. So chlorine, okay, x moles, because that's ultimately what we're going to try to find, and we have disulfur dichloride and we have 50 grams, but we cannot put that because we want to find the number of moles, because we want to find the mole ratio. How many moles, so we're going to jump to the next step. How many molecules of chlorine? Well, we have one molecule of chlorine, two, one molecule of um, uh, disulfur dichloride. So we're going to have now the mass, which is 50.0 grams of sulfur, and we're going to divide that by the molar mass of sulfur, right? And we get the following, 135 grams per mole. So grams cancel out, and we are left with 0 
moles of uh, disulfur dichloride. So, as we said before, we separate these two with our equal sign, and we're given X moles of chlorine divided by 0 0.370 equals 1 over 1. So, because we have 1 over 1, when we bring this over, X is equal to 0 0.370, and it's moles okay, of S2Cl2. Okay, so when we cancel this out, ultimately, whatever the moles of disulfur dichloride we have, we are going to have okay, the number of moles of chlorine is going to be the same. Okay. So now we have the number of moles, but we don't want the number of moles. It's asking us for how many molecules. But for us to be able to do that, we know that one mole okay, of Cl2 is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 uh, molecules. Okay. So how do we use that? Well, we have moles up at the top. We have molecules here at the bottom. But we have moles here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, let me just use a different color, 0 0.370 moles okay, times 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules, molecules, per one mole of substance. So the moles cancel out and I'm left with 2.22 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules, molecules of chlorine gas. Yes. 